Hello there, my name's Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky, and today we're going to have a look at voice control, which is a utility, comes with accessibility on your Mac and also on your iOS devices, and it's good for dictation. And I think it's going to be good enough to take over from Dragon Dictate, which I'm going to have to stop using soon because I'm going to be getting myself a Mac with Apple Silicon inside it, and Dragon Dictate is not going to work on that because they stopped working on it after version 6, and... Well, that was a shame that was, but still, this is going to be just as good, and I'm looking forward to showing you how to do voice control on your Mac and on your iOS devices. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to set up is how to get it started and stopped. So what we need to do is need to go into this one here, which is the system settings, and click on accessibility. In accessibility, we're going to go to voice control. And in voice control, you've got your settings here at the moment. You can see that it started and it was working. I've just turned it off. So you can do a few things in this here. You can set up your language. I've got it set up for my version of English. And you can add other languages too. I think only with the United States version of English do you get the added bonus of um, the punctuation being added automatically. But in any case, I think I like to put it in manually anyway. So I've got my microphone set up there. I've got overlay set to none. I get it to show hints, which is a good thing when you're learning how to use voice control. And I've got it to play a sound when command is recognized. On these uh, three dots here, you can go into this here. We can import vocabulary, export vocabulary, which is great if you're using more than one machine and you need to synchronize that across. And you can delete all vocabulary if you want to start fresh. You can import custom commands or export custom commands and do the same that. And obviously you can delete all of those if you want, if you need to start fresh. So in commands, what I've got here so far is a few extra ones here. I've got one here which creates a header too, because I write using Markdown. It will insert my name if I tell it to. It will make a list. It will do make new task. And this make new task is set so that it only works in the application sorted. Whereas if I'm telling it to make a list, it will work in any application. And same with insert my name and uh, create a header too. That's to do with any automated, any application also. Uh, you've got your basic navigations in here, you've got uh, other stuff in here as well. You can choose which of these uh, commands that you want in there. So if there's something that you're not going to use and you find that it comes up autom automatically without you asking when you've said something and you don't want it to come up, then you can turn these things off. So for instance, I could tell it to hide grid or hi not hide grid and I can have that set to uh, work or not as I desire. And you can make new ones, just go to click on this one here and set it what you're things going to be so when I say mm, whatever it's going to be bananas are excellent or <laughs> something silly like that you can do it to perform certain actions like open finder items open URLs paste text or whatever else or run an automated workflow so any of these things here you can get done and have it in your voice control as a custom command so I didn't create anything there. Let's go back into that there again. So this undefined command here, I'm going to get rid of that because I didn't do anything with it. Delete that command. And I'm just going to click on done for the moment. We'll go back to that at a later stage when I'm showing you some more tips, tricks and extra things you can do with voice control. You can also add vocabulary in here. So I was writing about Dragon Dictator or I was writing about things like, uh, where was it now, Tmux, which is a command line thing. And I wanted to be able to have it put it in correctly without having to get it wrong all the time. Sometimes you have to work out with these th things a few times before you start getting it. And another thing that you should notice is that when you're doing this here, you should speak in full sentences because there's some sort of AI going in the background and it will choose the words that it puts in there based upon this IA. So full sentences makes that it's going to understand what you're talking about a bit better and put in the correct words. And if you don't put in full sentences, then sometimes it's going to get it wrong. So one way of turning on voice control is to go into here and just do that. Another way to turn on voice control is to create a shortcut. So I've just done a search there for voice shortcuts and I've got one here called toggle voice control. Let's just go into that there and show you what I've got in there. And this is just basically a simple toggle voice control action in there and that's all I need in there. So if I toggle voice control, it'll turn it on or turn it off. And I've got it set so that it's uh, in the uh, menu bar. So I can go up to the menu bar here to shortcuts and I can click on this here and it will toggle voice control. 
If it's off, it'll turn it on. If it's on, it'll turn it off. Simple as that. And it's set up for the moment that it's working straight away. And I can click on that and it will tell it to go to sleep. And now I've got to tell it to wake up to start working again. So basically, you can have it running all the time and just tell it to go to sleep when you don't want to listen to your boring old voice anymore. So let's start off by doing a command to wake it up. Wake up. Select all. Delete that. Create header 2. Undo that. Delete that. Create header 2. I like to write using Markdown. New paragraph. I think you'll find, once you get used to it, that writing with dictation is much faster than using the keyboard, full stop. Like I said, it's best to speak in complete sentences, full stop. You don't need to stop and leave a space in between sentences and you can continue dictation as long as you want, full stop, like I am at the moment, full stop. Select what I am, like I am. Go to the end, new paragraph. You can move around the text fairly easily by telling it to select previous words in your dictation, full stop. If it has made a mistake, you can tell it to select that word where you've made a mistake and get it to select from other options or just say the words that you want instead. Select the words, correct that. Six. Go to the end. Most of the times I find the options it gives me to correct the words are not very good, full stop. Not as good as I used to get with Dragon Dictate, full stop. Capitalise Dictate. Go to the end. Correct good. One. Brilliant. You don't have to accept the words that it offers you in the corrections panel, full stop. This is particularly good because usually the words that it suggests are not any of the words that you're likely to want to use, full stop. I'm of the opinion that using this dictation is good enough to get you your first draft, full stop. Everybody knows that the first draft of anything you write is going to be terrible, full stop. I wouldn't expect my first draft to be something that is good enough to send out to the public, full stop. I would expect to edit that first draft once and maybe twice, depending on what it's going to be used for. Select useful, used for. So it's a good idea to just use the, to delete previous word, delete previous sentence, delete previous paragraph undo that. So it's a good idea to use dictation as a way to get the ideas out of your head and onto the page, full stop, then to go in afterwards and do the editing to make it something that's understandable for the general public, full stop. The main rule would be to use full sentences, but sometimes there is a little trick you can use if you need to have something which is going to be in capital letters, full stop. I want the next part of this to be mainly in lowercase or sentence case. And then I want the last bit to be in capital letters. Capitalise that. You just have to say those words and then say capitalise that, full stop. Delete previous word. Delete previous character. Full stop. So as you can see, using voice control and dictation with voice control is pretty useful. You've got commands in there which you can use to go back and edit the text where it's made mistakes. And you can basically get ideas out of your head and onto the page pretty rapidly. I recommend you give it a try. My name's Dave Allen. I'm good and geeky. And talk to you again soon. Bye-bye now.